It's that time of year when eight-year-olds start to dream about becoming the next Formula One star. For many, that dream will not be realised, but for the very few who do go on to be successful, this is where the dream starts. We're at the Lakeland Stadium at Rowra in Cumbria for round one of the Awning Company's Super One British Karting Championships. Karting, like many other sports, is constantly updating the rules and regulations and in 2016 a new innovation has been introduced in an attempt to reduce the amount of incidents caused when one cart pushes a cart in front off the racing line or off the circuit completely or indeed into a train of carts in front resulting in the carts at the front being pushed out of the way, otherwise known as loading. The new concept involves a front bumper design that will drop away in the event of a collision with a cart in front and result in an automatic penalty for that driver after the race. However, the new design has caused mixed reactions in the sport and a whole host of headaches for officials. Earlier, I spoke to the Super 1 clerk of the course, Ken Potter, about the system, but first, I had a look at the bumper design with Adrian Coles from Coles Racing. Adrian, new mounting system for the front nose cone this year, um, designed to reduce the amount of contact driving, obviously. Just explain, if you can, the new system, how it works uh, and what we're looking at here. OK. Uh, on the carts, the front end of the carts with the bars and the nose cone are identical. Um, what's actually changed is the mounting bracket is now this black bracket with two mounting points on it. So it sits in this point during the normal racing situation. If there's any impact, then it moves so this pink comes forward, the bumper goes loose, you finish the race and you pick up a 10 second penalty. And I think what happens is it comes in, the scrutineers just basically photograph it and there's no appeal. Um, it's, it's as simple as that. I know it's a 10 second penalty now, it was a 10 place penalty. The MSA have been listening to the drivers, the complaints, and trying to make it fairer for everybody. Um, now we did have a situation earlier in the season where somebody led from lights to flag, clipped to Weybridge, and got a penalty. We don't want to see that, obviously. What's your view on um, the new system? Clearly, we need to do something about contact driving particularly loading through Turn 1. Yes. Um, what's the sort of feedback you're getting? What's your opinion on it? Uh, certainly for us, you know, myself and the team, we think is a big improvement. Um, it's taken away you know, the issues of the first lap. So you actually, you're in the race. You're, you know, you're not been taken off in a pile-up on the first bend or the first lap. So that's far better. I'm sure the rules will evolve going forward. I think the bumper's right. It's just maybe there might be some slight adaption to how they impose a penalty but at the minute it is very much like you say black and white if you come in and your bumper's loose has been knocked in that's it it's a penalty um, it, it is harsh if something's happened outside your control or you get hit from behind into somebody but the the benefit we're all getting on the first lap without the crashing is fantastic it's just maybe a slight involvement of the rules going forward to make the rest of it better but I'm sure that will you know improve as we go forward Okay, and just playing devil's advocate a little bit, talk to me about brake checking, because there's, it, you can absolutely guarantee certain people will be thinking he's right behind me, we're into the last couple of laps, if I just lean on the brakes, he might just run into me enough just to push his nose cone back. We, you're sort of replacing one issue with another, but I, I think the, the reasoning behind it is right. We do want to stop contact driving. Have you seen much of that? Is that in evidence? Is it a problem? Um, it's the first round of the championship this weekend, so we're very new to it. At the club racing so far this season, I would say it hasn't been you know, evidence that it's been going on a lot. 
for sure there's an opportunity to do it as you say but uh, it's at the championship level when you've got the forward facing cameras it's going to be down to the officials to see hang on you know you can watch the previous two or three laps footage if all of a sudden you're going through a bend where it's been flowing and fast the next minute the kids in front is stamped on the brakes in my point of view then they need to be imposing penalties on the lad in front not the one behind on that but with the cameras that should be possible if the officials are looking at the footage carefully and properly. Ken, the introduction of the new nose cone assembly in the last six months by the MSA has uh, been introduced to stop loading, to try and uh, impact on contact to driving effectively. Just tell me some of the issues that it's caused you as an official so far. Well, you're always going to have drivers who feel that they've been penalised unfairly. They might have, somebody might have spun, they might have run into the back of them. Um, but unfortunately, penalty is the penalty, and I think it is a step forward. And we've certainly seen a reduction in first corner, second corner incidents. Yeah, I certainly agree. I think the, the reasoning behind it is absolutely sound. There's no doubt about that. Now, we have seen, though, um, two or three months ago when it first came in, we had somebody in a club meeting lead from lights to flag, came in, clipped a Weybridge, and then received a penalty. Um, that's obviously not what we want to see, but what you're saying is there's, there's no appeal. If the nose cone uh, it has dropped, then that is an automatic penalty. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Unfortunately, there will always be somebody in an extreme example as you've given. But if we start allowing discussion and appeals, then we'll have queues outside the office. We'll, we'll never get uh, racing. So unfortunately, the penalty is the penalty. It's round one, seven classes racing this weekend. Let's stick with tradition and have a look at my ones to watch in each of those classes. Honda Cadet has grown in stature since its inclusion as a Super 1 class several years ago. This season it's as open as ever. Reggie Dewey drove in Iami Cadet last season and has made the decision to double up this season in Honda Cadet as well. He's been impressive in the early sessions and qualified third fastest. The 68 cart is driven by Cason Gibson, a novice last season, he's been flying in the practice sessions. He was fourth fastest in time qualifying. The man they all have to beat though drives the two plate. Harry Thompson races in both the Honda and IAMI cadet classes and the vice champion in Honda last year is looking to achieve a historic double. In iArmy Cadet, Joseph Taylor drives the six cart and was fastest in time qualifying earlier. He will no doubt be looking to convert his raw pace into race wins. Look out for a young lady to be hunting top six finishes during the season. Alicia Barrett was 31 hundredths off of Taylor's pole time to qualify 10th and then got a fifth place in her second heat earlier. This suggests she has the tools to compete at this level. My tip for the title this year though is Bray Keneally. He was my one to watch last year but spent most of the season having to start finals from the back of the grid. If he can have better heat results and get himself amongst the front running grid positions in the finals, he could be the one to thwart Harry Thompson's ambitions for a Honda iArmy Cadet double. The TKM classes are back on the rise and in junior TKM Bradley White dominated the earlier heats winning by three seconds each time. If he can continue in that vein he will be a major championship contender but this is junior TKM and one of the most competitive classes. Expect Christian Brawley and Adam Sparrow to provide a challenge but for another one to watch look no further than the rookie Joe Fowler. He's been very impressive in his first Super 1 meeting so far and I wouldn't put it past him to find a few podiums during the season. My tip for the championship though, it's the favourite Abby Pulling. Immense speed allied with racecraft could see us have the first female Super 1 champion since Tiffany Chittenden won the Rotax DD2 class in 2007. It's the greatest comeback in sporting history. Nine drivers took part last year, 47 at round one this year in TKM Extreme. And Phil Smith driving the 93 cart. He's a multiple British Open Extreme champion. He's making a return to karting after several years away. Look for him to take at least one win during 2016. Another driver making a welcome return is Charlie Bruce White. He won the title in 2002. If he were to repeat that feat 14 years on, it would be the stuff of legend. Can the old bones take the punishment though? 
I know it's not PC to tip the champion to win, but when the naysayers were saying Matt England's championship win last season was only due to the small field, he went to the TKM Festival in a field of 70 plus drivers and put it on pole to prove his quality. I believe in a field of 47 this season, he is the one they all have to beat. The Rotax classes are wide open as usual in Minimax. The 2014 Honda Cadet champion Tom Canning is on fire this weekend and looks like a potential champion in the making for KR Sport. Johnny Edgar won three British Open titles in Iami Cadet back to back to back and finished as vice champion last season. He went to the United States during the winter and showed them why British is best winning the championship there. He'll be a serious contender in 2016 for the Minimax title. My tip for the top spot though is Jensen Butterfield. He won the British Open title here recently and runs the O-plate on his cart. He will hope to get his 2016 campaign off to a flyer. In Junior Rotax, the recent British Open title went to William Pettit. He's always a front runner and will be a tough nut for all the others to crack. Axel Charpentier finished as vice champion in Minimax last season to his teammate Kian Dewis. No Dewis to contend with this season in Junior Rotax, and the Frenchman may go one better this time. My tip for the Junior Rotax title, though, is the always consistent Jonathan Hoggard. He made an early transition last season to the Junior class, an error in my opinion. He should have stayed in the Minimax class and challenged for that crown, but that experience may pay dividends this year. In Senior Rotax, Strawberry Racing are looking to recover the ground they lost to Dan Holland Racing and Sam Marsh last season. Jack McCarthy may do that for them. He won the O-plate here recently and is looking for back-to-back -back junior and senior titles. If anyone can, Jack can. And for many, Jack McCarthy will be the championship favourite. But look out for this 17 cart driven by Josh White. He's looking in sparkling form and could go close himself. You'd be a fool to bet against the DHR or Strawberry Racing driver to win the title, wouldn't you? But I'm thinking we might see a changing of the guard this season, with the KR Sport driver Harrison Thomas looking good in the earlier practice sessions. If you're looking for a decent each-way bet that could just upset the favourite teams, look no further than Harrison to pay you some dividends. And finally, a Super 1 first with husband and wife team Dean and Gemma Goldberg racing in the same TKM Extreme class. Look for Dean to punt his wife off into the tyres at some point during the season. If I don't hear the announcement, can drivers Dean and Gemma Goldberg come to the clerk of the courses office immediately at least once during the season, I will be more than disappointed. Come on Dean, you know we're all watching, give us a laugh. You know it makes sense. Those are my ones to watch this season. You may have a different view and drivers will no doubt want to prove me wrong. See if they can after the break when we're underway with the first finals of the Super 1 season. We'll see you then.